Hello everyone, I wanted to make a quick update video about some of the things that are going on and I'm going to start with the release of the insulation covers and the bottom skirts for the Doom Cube that I designed and showed in the V2 episode. So uh, I'm talking about these when I say insulation covers, this is the bottom side and this is the top side and uh, I showed these in action in the uh, World War 2 episode as I said. Well, these are pretty much ready, so I'm just going to release them, by the way. These are for 350 builds, so if you have something else, you can't use them, but for a, a 350 build, I think these are a pretty cool accent piece, so... Yeah, if you're interested in them, it's linked in the description below. I'm also releasing the bottom skirts, so uh, yeah, the skirts that I designed for the Doom Cube on the bottom electronics chamber. These are slightly different from the stock skirts and uh, these are different in a way that the hex pattern is a bit different and I think this looks better but uh, yeah obviously your opinion may vary. Uh, since the release of that video what I did is I combined the four pieces together and split them into three just like the stock skirts and uh, the reason I did that is most people don't have to print these in a 120mm heat pad anyway and uh, there were some problems uh, on when I printed these on my Warren Zero seat pad. Like, uh, obviously I could have adjusted this, but I didn't. And, you know, for example, one screw was holding the skirt piece in place. And, uh, yeah, stuff like that. It doesn't work that well. And as I said, most people don't have this restriction. So I thought three pieces would be better. Uh, there's also this corner leg piece. This is based on hard case mode, but mine is slightly different. So I have to release this uh, with the skirts as well. So uh, yeah, you can find them. It's released, as I said. And this is the power skirt. This is for the either left or right, but not center, uh, any side of the printer. In my case, I'm using this on the right side, the rearmost skirt. It basically uses the same uh, uh, plug mount, but one change is I widened these holes to 4.7mm, which is for threaded inserts. I think they work better than self tappers so uh, yeah, that's why I did that. And I'm also releasing this hole. Normally you wouldn't need this skirt piece, because uh, normally you would route your wires inside the 4040 extrusions on your printer side. But since I use 42020 extrusions, I didn't have the space to do that, so I had to route the wires at the back. That's why this exists. Uh, you most likely won't need this, but if you do, it's included. I will also release the top skirts and the display uh, fairly soon. I just have to finish these and really the uh, Fusion 360 is ridiculously buggy. If you ever used Fusion, you probably know. And that kind of... Uh, that uh, just... That just frustrated me too much. I had a ton of uh, weird bugs here and there, so yeah, I gave up, but... So uh, yeah, these will be definitely released, I just uh, need to get around to do that, which will probably be in a week or two at the latest, but uh, again, it will be in the same link in the description below. And uh, that link goes to my um, mods repository, which is actually for working progress mods, just like that one. There's also a spool holder here for the uh, Boron 2.4 top mount spool holder. It's not Doom related, but uh, if you want it, it's here. But uh, yeah, in the Doom folder, you can find everything you need. And uh, eventually when these are done, I'll try to see if there is a place I can upload these. Maybe just for on users. Maybe if there is a separate uh, mods repository for Doomcube, I don't know. I'll look into that. But uh, yeah, for now, these will live here. And if I do that, I'll definitely update the link in the description as well. So don't worry about that. Now, uh, there's also the release of the new Voron 0, 0.1. So, uh, yeah, they didn't update their website or the pictures here or basically anything so far, but uh, I'm sure that's coming, this is very new, but we know what it looks like, so uh, you can see it in the Warren live, live stream. The changes are the things we knew already, the integrated lead screw and the direct drive tool hat, and uh, the taller top hat, at least, I think this is part of the changes actually, I'm not 100% sure, but this is Steve's build and it looks like it's taller. And apparently there are some quality of life improvements as well, but this doesn't look like that big of a change from Boron 0.0, .0 so it should be a quick upgrade. And this will definitely be coming to the channel uh, pretty soon, and probably in the next Boron 0 episode whenever I get around to do that. And uh, speaking of Boron 0, uh, if you followed the Voron 2 series, I know you know I printed the Doom Cube parts on my Voron 0 and I had a lot of reliability issues. I just wanted to quickly address that, what's going on. 
the biggest problem is um, the M2 screws that attach the tool head to the MGN7 rail. Well, they are a bit loose and they are stripped so I can't tighten them and as a result the tool head wobbles a bit and uh, fixing that would require a destructive teardown of the Voron Zero so I'd have to basically uh, tear up out the uh, tool head printed parts and reprint them which uh, I don't have a working 3D printer at the moment so I just have to live with it but that's the reason I had to print too close to the PEI so if you notice that, well, there you go, that's the reason but there's also the problem of the missing rear panel that is because of it's my Warren Zero zombified state. I mentioned this word a few times, but basically it comes down to wiring. I doing the wiring is at its current state pretty difficult. I need that PCB I ordered from uh, PCB away and it hasn't arrived yet. So uh, yeah, the wiring in the back is a bit complicated, and as a result, I can't actually use the rear panel, and uh, there that causes some heat issues, as you might guess when printing ABS. So as a temporary solution, and I thought about this way too late, so first print, a lot of the first prints are warped, but now I have a plastic bag over my Boron Zero, and uh, yeah, that works, but uh, still, it, the other issues still exist, so the print quality still isn't that great. Plus, there's something going on with the layer, it's not adhering properly, even with the plastic bag. I don't know if it's heating, I don't know if it's mechanical, but there's something going, going on there as well. But uh, because these issues didn't exist in the past, I know these uh, aren't a problem with the Voron Zero. I just need to spend some time with the Voron Zero and probably reprint some parts to fix these issues. And that will definitely happen whenever I do the Voron 0.1 upgrade. But uh, I do need the uh, Voron 2.4 working again before I do that, because I need a working 3D printer. But uh, speaking of uh, printer build, I uh, have a ton of uh, printer parts lying around from building a few different printers i just happen to have a lot of them lying around so i decided looking at some options for a third printer or my fourth printer ever but the tevo black widow is disassembled now so third active printer i guess and the biggest contender at the moment is the tiny m so uh, for those of you who don't know what this is this is a war on zero basically but it's scaled up to use uh, 2020 extrusions instead of 1515 and uses MGN 9 reels instead of MGN 7s or MGN 12s in some places looks like it I think it was just MGN 9s at some point but not hundred percent sure I think now there are uh, MGN 12s as well but uh, anyway and it uses NEMA 17 is instead of NEMA 14s and has a 150 by 150 heat pad so uh, uh, yeah this is one of the options I'm considering I also looked at the War on 1 because I actually really like the War on 1's design but uh, really, if I uh, just price out these printers, I can build uh, the Tiny M for like $250 because I basically have most of the parts needed. Whereas for the War on One, I'd need to buy a lot more, and yeah, it would delay the print, uh, it would delay the printer build. So, uh, yeah, I'm right now I'm considering a Tiny M build. This doesn't necessarily mean that I'm actually going to do this or not, but uh, yeah, it's one of the options that I'm considering. and. And I'm also thinking about doomifying the Tiny M so I can have uh, panels on the sides like the, uh, my Doom Cube Voron 2 and uh, maybe even a filament drawer at the bottom so I don't have to have a spool holder and you know a few quality of life stuff like that. I could also increase the Z height which could, would be very easy because I can use an integrated lead screw NEMA 17 and uh, since they are usually designed for taller printers that would be a very easy modification to make to make this a bit taller and uh, yes yeah, stuff like that obviously as i said i haven't decided yet and i have to spend a lot of time in cad to figure out if i actually want to do this or not but this is an option i'm considering i'll also look into other printer options as well i just looked at the Voron one and the tiny m at the moment but i'll definitely look into them more but uh yeah based on but uh, yeah, based on the cost that I have for this tiny M build, I think a new printer is coming pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, that's really all I wanted to talk about. Uh, actually, one more thing. You might have noticed I skipped a few video uploads, mostly on Mondays recently. But uh, I'm not going to get too much into that. I just had some real life stuff to do, which means I didn't have enough time for the videos. But uh, I think I'll, I can go back to the usual schedule now, so stay tuned for that. And actually one more thing, Feistek is sending me a spider board. 
the board they designed for the War on 2, it has 8 drivers and looks like a pretty cool board. So uh, there will be a video of that on the channel and I will be using that on my War on 2. So also stay tuned for those videos as well. But now this is actually it for this video, so uh, I hope you're excited for the upcoming projects and thanks for watching.